video is going to look at how to extract audio from a DVD. If you've ever purchased a, a concert DVD and you'd like to listen to all the music on your iPad or your phone, or extract the movie soundtrack from a DVD, this video will show you how to do that using free tools on both Windows and Mac. So there is some, some software that you need to get started. So first of all, you need to rip the DVD. So if the, the DVD is a commercial DVD, it comes with copy protection. You need to create a digital file. There are a number of tools where you can rip DVDs and Blu-rays. And the one I'm going to look at is called Handbrake, which is free and works for Mac or Windows. For ripping commercial DVDs, you also need some other software called the VLC Media Player. And that's required along with Handbrake to actually accomplish the ripping of the, the movie. And if you're not sure how to do that process, have a look in the description for a link to a video that I've done on, on ripping with Handbrake and Windows 7. You also need the QuickTime Player. And if you're on a Mac that comes with the Mac operating system, if you're on Windows, then you can download it from Windows. Uh, the other bit of software that will convert videos and audio is called MPEG Stream Clip. And that's available for both platforms. Download either version. And that will let you convert videos to other formats. It also will extract the audio as well. So the first thing to do is to rip the DVD. So I'm going to use Handbrake. And the DVD is in the drive. So to locate that drive, select your video source. So clicking Source will locate the drive in the player and load it up. Uh, that's the, the series of titles. So this is what you want to rip. I want to rip the whole movie. So it's, gen it's generally the longest file. It's 1 hour 31. The rest of them are very short. So they're either menus or um, scenes or something like that so that there's nothing here that I want to rip it that's the movie and because I want the audio I'm not too interested in the in the video I'm not going to change any of the settings there apart from selecting universal uh, as a device and if the presets are shut you toggle presets and just select universal it's the audio that I'm interested in so I want to select audio and ensure that the track that I want to rip is in the first position. So there are several audio tracks in a DVD generally. Uh, audio commentaries, different languages, surround sound, 5.1 channel sound. The only one I'm interested in because I'm going to play this as an MP3 is the two channel stereo. Uh, make sure the codec is the AAC if you want him to play it in um, mobile devices, particularly iTunes. Uh, so leave stereo, not mono, sample rated auto and the bit rate at 320. And that's all you've got to do in terms of settings and then click the start to rip the DVD to a digital file. The digital file, if I go into my finder to the desktop, there's the, the actual digital file. It's a very big file, 1.56 gigabyte, that's the entire movie. And now I can use that digital file to extract the audio using a couple of different tools. So the first one I'm going to look at is QuickTime Player. So let's just close that and open QuickTime Player. And either you have that installed on a Mac or you have it installed as your Windows version. And in QuickTime Player, I'm going to open the, the file I just ripped. So that one. And I can play it in QuickTime Player. So I can... Click the play and it will start to play that movie. Uh, and it's an hour and a half. You can see the, the length of the movie. But I want to rip the audio. Now I can do it in two ways. I can rip the audio from the whole movie. Or I can find the location that I want and rip that bit. And in this case, I'll show you how to do the whole movie. Uh, going to File, Export. I'm going to export that movie as audio only. Give it a name, let's call it audio, and where do you want to save it? And that starts to export that movie fairly quickly. So if I go into the finder again, Austin Powers Audio, that's done 
really quickly. It's 113 megabyte. It's in MPEG-4 audio, as distinct from the actual movie file, which was 1.56 gigabytes. And I can take that file now and I can play it. So you can play it with the default app, which is iTunes. So let's do that. It should open up iTunes. Copied it in. Add in the music. Austin Powers Audio. So there it is there at 163 kilobits. So that's playing in, in, um, in iTunes, that audio. So just drag straight in because it's compatible with iTunes. And if you didn't want to use iTunes, you could use something else. So I could open it up with uh, QuickTime Player again or the VLC Media Player. QuickTime Player. It's only, it's the whole one and a half hours. And then the audio will play from there. So I'll move that out of the way. So that's the audio playing. Now if you don't want the whole movie and you only want part of it, in QuickTime you can actually trim the movie and just take that section that you want. Uh, so in Edit, select Trim. And then you've got to find the place where you want to trim from. So if I wanted to start from here I can click on it to see that position in the movie and then I can move the scrubber to find the exact place in the movie that I want to to, to cut from then I can play it to actually hear it to make sure I get the right spot and then I can move the trim when I find the end if I only want that little little bit in the middle I can select this part only and then click the trim now what I want to do I'm going to take it back to the end uh, I just want the end credits so I can go to the very end of the film. To the end. And that, I only want that part. You can sort of see there it's at 1 hour 26 into the film. So it's the last five minutes. So selecting it, uh, the trim in and the trim out. I don't have to touch the trim out because I want the whole end credits. And then click trim. And now it's it's five minutes because I've effectively cut the rest of it out. And again, you go back to File, Export, Audio, and call it Last Five Minutes, and Save, and it's very quick. We'll go back into the Finder. Austin Powers, The Last Five Minutes. That's six megabytes. And again, I can put that into iTunes or save it onto any other um, phone or, or media player that I want. So that one works. I open it up with quick time. Bring it down here. It's five minutes. Now one of the other ways to export audio is to use a program called MPEG Stream Clip. And if you have installed Mavericks, the latest operating system for Mac, MPEG Stream Clip no longer works and uh, you'd have to find something else, QuickTime or some other software that you can purchase. If you uh, haven't upgraded to Mavericks, it still works. It does work, however, for Windows. So if you've got a Windows computer or if you're using Windows in a virtual machine on the Mac, this one will still work. So we'll have a look at it anyway. I'm using Windows 7 in a virtual environment and I've downloaded MPEG Stream Clip the beta for Windows. And to use MPEG Stream Clip, you also need QuickTime. So on um, Windows 7, you needed to have downloaded the QuickTime player. So in my downloads folder, I've just created a folder for MPEG Stream Clip Windows 7. And there's the, the file, it just opens. It just needs QuickTime. And to extract audio using this program, Again, you can extract audio from the whole movie, or you can extract it in segments. So you can trim and just extract what you want. So from this one, let's just open the file. So I've already using the same DVD that's been ripped, which is Austin Powers. So you can preview the movie so I can get it, get it playing. So I can then go and find where I want to trim it from. If I want to do the whole thing, just going into File, Export Audio. Now, MPEG Stream Clip exports to different formats, so it's a good way to convert videos from one 
format to another. If you have a Windows media movie file and you want to export it as, as an MP4, this program will do it. It's a free player. In this case, we only want to export the audio, so I can take that option. And I'm going to save it as an MP3 this time. Uh, that will work on all systems. AIF will work in iTunes, but so will MP3. So let's just take that. Keep it at stereo. Stereo, stereo or mono are your only choices. Uh, sample rate auto and the highest bit rate possible, which is 256. Adjustments are used if you have uh, movie files, or, or I could make the volume a bit louder. So I'm going to keep those as they are, and then OK. I give the file a title, so let's call it MP3, and select where you want it to go. So I'll save it on the desktop, save, and now it starts to export that audio. It's quite quick. So let's just pause there, come back when that file is finished. So that file is finished. It's there sitting on that Windows desktop. So let's just go back to the Mac desktop and find that file in the desktop. So it's here in Austin Powers MP3. And I can play that. I can open it with QuickTime and play that. So that is playing, that's the whole movie's audio as an MP3. Or I can try and put it into iTunes. So just open iTunes and drag it into iTunes. Awesome Powers Audio, MP3 for Windows. Now if you wanted to extract segments of audio instead of the whole movie, you can do that in MPEG Stream Clip as well. So with the movie selected, uh, Navigate to the to the spot you want us to save. I want the last five minutes, so I want to use the scrubber to get me as close as possible to that where it says end. And then to fine tune that, I only use the the fast forward here just to get to the very end. That's the that's the in point. So once I've got it to that point, I do edit select in. Then I want the rest of it. So at the last five minutes, so I move the scrubber to the very end and edit, select the out point, then edit, trim. And this is only going to give me the last five minutes. So you can see down here, the in point, start at one hour, 26 minutes, and finish at one hour, 31. So I can export that audio as an MP3. And that's pretty quick. Now if we look at that in the, the Windows environment, move that out the way, is the last five minutes. And I can play that instead of with iTunes, instead of with the QuickTime player, I'm going to play it with the Windows Media Player. So back to the Mac again. This one still works in Maverick, so it would work in all previous versions of OS 10 and this one's called extract movie soundtrack so it's utility file so it doesn't have to be installed you just open it use it and then close it again it's not installed in the applications folder uh, that's the website where you can download it and it's shareware full shareware but it's also called donationware so you could donate if you wish to and the difference with this one this one is particularly good for a DVD that has uh, like a concert DVD where you've got each song is a different track. When you rip it from handbrake, before you actually start the ripping process, go into chapters and make sure that chapter markers is selected so that every time the scene changes or a chapter changes, you're going to get a separate track. Now the and then rip it as normal. The software, the Extract Movie Soundtrack software will extract each scene or each track so that you can have your concert DVD song by song instead of having one long concert track which has all the, the audio or you try and find where all the tracks start and end, this will do it for you. 
So if I open the file, it's just a utility. So I'll put it into the desktop and open it and close that. Uh, the only things that you have to choose from is whether you want it as an AIFF file, and that will work in iTunes and most players, or you want it as a WAV file uh, or an AU file. Stereo, so you've only got stereo or mono, 16-bit uh, or 8-bit. So the only thing I've changed, I've, I've selected Divide by Chapters, Process the Movie. So I've actually got to find the movie, which is on the desktop. Is the movie and open it and it starts to process so it's going to put all those files on the desktop where you can then move them and it's quite quick and it will process every scene every chapter of that DVD and then if you if you haven't quite got it right you can then put it back into QuickTime or MPEG stream clip and trim again just to get that finite change so into the desktop, there are all the different chapters. So it's, it's converted that file from a movie into 18 chapters of audio. So the last chapter, we start that, we play that in the QuickTime player, is the last five minutes. So that's that last uh, end credits that I was trying to get before. It actually starts it for me there. That's the opening of the movie. And then you can rename it, so I can rename it because Chapter 1 AIFF is a bit hard to, to work out. So you can rename it and, and uh, save it wherever you like. Uh, so there's a few ways that you can extract audio from a movie.